Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. And today we're going to go over how you can make custom cuts in Autodesk Inventor. So I'm pretty sure you guys, a lot of you know that you can like get different lengths of um, C channels in, in the library. So for example, here we have all sorts of lengths, like one to 35 of C channel. And then there, there's also these half half cuts and they already get cut in half. I, I do have some custom parts that I am using, right? So for example, if you want to have these custom cuts, like you want a half cut of a C channel, like really thin, but you still want to have a bit of the L shaped here left, right? You want to cut only like up to here. So you still have a little bit of that strength from the um, L shape. It's actually pretty simple. We are going to use the extrude tool, right? Uh, before we cut things, always make sure to save it. So I'm just going to name this uh, cut slim. It's like a slim one. And then you can just skip this. It doesn't really matter. So right now we are have we saved as. So that means we are editing on the cut slim file rather than editing the original file. And then we can just select a surface that we want to cut from. So for example, if we want to cut from here, there's two ways that we can do it. One way is to select from here and then just draw a big rectangle. It doesn't really matter the dimensions as long as it covers the entire thing. And then you want to click on extrude and you want to click on cut. Right now we're cutting one inches of the entire box. That is not what we want. So you can do like 0 0.375, right? And then that will cut off most of the thing or you can do like 0.25. That will leave some of the things here. And then we want it to be flush, so 0.375 is a pretty good number. And we we'll click OK. So now we have this uh, channel, C channel, that is cut. And we still have the L shaped here. So it's a lot harder to bend compared to just like a flat piece. I mean, this, this is really good in CAD. However, in, in real life, in order to cut this, this is a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie, but it is what it is. Like if you need this for like a certain design, then definitely go for it. And we also have these like just floating circles. So we can just select the floating circles and just right click on them, delete. And then you can just click OK, delete. And now they're gone. That is pretty easy. All right, I'm going to just undo everything. There is another way to do it. So the other way is to start a sketch from the side. Okay, it doesn't want me to create a sketch for some reason. All right, this side works too. <coughs> so if we go from the top, we can just like align ourselves right here. All right, we want it to be flush. So we can just dimension this to here to be zero inches. So that will align the top of this line to the top of the hole, right? And then we're going to press E on our keyboard to get the extrude tool out and then click on cut. And that will cut the thing exactly at it at the edge of each hole. You can click OK. And then same thing, we just want to delete these circles. Pretty cool. All right, I'm going to show you something else that pretty much uses the same basics. So for example, if you want to have something that looks like this to mount your um, lift, I think I used it in one of my robots before. It's used to uh, basically mount one of your lifts. So your drivetrain is here and then your uh, 
power is like somewhere in here. So in order to do something like that, it's actually not as hard as you imagine. It's just the holes are going to be a little bit annoying. That's why I didn't remove it in mine. So pretty much it's, it's the same thing. So you'd want to just make, let's say we want to preserve uh, this area. We want to preserve this area. And we also want to preserve this area, right? So if we want to do like a cut from like here to here, yeah, I think that that's pretty reasonable. Right, it doesn't really look that great because it might cut through some holes, but it is what it is. We can just have make an area around it. And then make sure that the loop is closed, so then you can use it to extrude, and then you can just do cuts. And there we go, we have a cut surface. All right. And then the holes here, that it's going to be really annoying because we are basically drawing one hole and then repeating it, uh, repeating it using the rectangular pattern. Well, like you, you can go into it and then like deleting the specific instances, but to be honest, it's not really that necessary because when you're uh, catting and stuff, you can just leave this hanging, it doesn't really matter. And when you really want to um, export it, like make a nice render out of it, you can just like turn off these uh, construction surfaces and then put your visual style to like realistic and then like you can turn on ray tracing or something. Right, and right now there's no light, that's why it's like black, but yeah <clears throat> so you don't really need to do that honestly all right so if you want to cut something that isn't c channel it's pretty much the same idea so like for example if you want to cut the linear slide you want to uh, make a copy like save it save as a copy first and then you just start sketch somewhere and then just like let's say i want it I want to cut this part off and then just it's the same thing you just extrude cut it off and then if you cut it off you can I cut I cut off the wrong side but uh, yeah so I'll show you how to do it properly so then that's say if you want to cut it from here and you want to cut like perfectly from like here and just like five holes you want to dimension this to this to be exactly five holes so that's it will be 2.5 inches so that is exactly 2.5 holes we just cut through everything all right cool and then we want to go into this rectangular pattern we edit it to be 19 UL is like just 19 units and then that will match the amount of holes that we actually have So yeah cutting metal isn't actually as hard as you think It's just pretty much finding a sketch and then extruding it using the cut uh, feature and then you can just cut through whatever stuff yeah, and some people like to cut the uh, the new thick gears as well because they only cut they only come in the the um, thick version like the high strength version. Let me find it real quick. Gears. So you want you you want to probably go into the gears. So this is the sixty tooth or forty eight tooth, and then the 82 so I think most people use the 48 I think and then just find the uh, whichever one yeah the, these are all dot IAMs let me open it yeah, and then this is the 48 tooth so let's go find the 48 tooth file 
yeah I think this is it so here is the 48 tooth file and then you see it's a two body so we have one solid in the middle that's like within the plastic and then we also have the outer body which, which is the plastic around so if if you guys have a uh, access to like a lathe or like some CNC machine you can actually just start a sketch it's pretty much the same same thing just like um, you know make a draw a circle I think this looks about right and then you can just extrude this you do a cut and then I think why is this in millimeters hold on document settings units inch yes thank you yeah so you can just cut the other way and then let's say we want to do like 0.125 right and then that will cut most of the things all right that will cut it from the outside and then we can do the same thing on the other side i kind of forgot the inner diameter but i think it was like some somewhere here and then just somewhere bigger than the thing same thing press e on the keyboard extrude you want it to be cut so it cuts into the gear and then there you go you now have a low strength 48 tooth gear very cool yeah so that that's about it it's really not that hard we're just abusing sketch and we're abusing extrude and that basically gets your job done thank you very much for watching and have a great day